Chapter 476 Murky Transactions When Matsuura Harekuro was still on the phone, Lu Shu suddenly turned and walked towards him. Matsuura tried to remain calm and talked to his phone, sure. I'm coming back to the office right now. Then he left at once, but Lu Shu was trailing behind. No matter where he went, Lu Shu followed. Matsuura started to panic. Wasn't he supposed to be a coward who even gets bullied by normal students in school? Why is he so different in front of me? Only a Class D, Matsuura Harekuro was well aware that Kirahara Yusuke's capabilities were much stronger than his, judging from the speed and strength of the kick at least. But when he turned to check his distance from Lu Shu, the latter had already been gone. Matsuura stood still in shock for a long moment. What a shame! He had lost his target himself. From Matsuura Harekuro's distress, plus 399. After visiting a few supermarkets, Lu Shu realized that there were no Chinese condiments for sale. Surely, he could try his luck at a Chinese market, but it was inappropriate given his current identity. When he returned home, Bundai smiled at him and asked, Is it because you failed to find any condiments? Why didn't you tell me earlier since you knew it? Lu Shu was confused. Bundai surely knew the situation after so many years there. But she led him to the kitchen. In fact, we do have what we need. In early years Mr. and Mrs. Kirihara settled in China for a period of time. Simply put, they were spies in our country. After they came back, they missed the taste of Chinese cuisines so much that they made a special trip to buy Chinese condiments. Actually the peace upheld by many conservative members stems from vested interests, unlike Mr. and Mrs. Kirihara, who genuinely loved our Chinese culture. Lu Xu did not know how to reply. What a pity. Then, he only made two dishes, sour and hot shredded potatoes and tomatoes with scrambled eggs, purely vegetarian. When Bundai picked up a few potato shreds with great caution and sent them to her mouth, she was moved to tears. Her tears dropped into her rice bowl, one after another. Then, she stood up and made a deep bow to Lu Shu. Thank you. It has been a long time and I almost forgot about the taste. Have you ever regretted your decision? Lu Shu asked curiously. But Bundai's face instantly turned stern. Never. My father said that jobs like mine must be done. Maybe his greatest takeaway of this trip thus far was to get to know Tanaguchi Bundai, who had been toiling for their motherland in silence, Lu Xu thought. Otherwise, probably he would never have known the existence of such people. Was that the belief of the heavenly network? After dinner, Lu Xu practiced his sword in the yard. It was nothing but basic movements. In fact, some of the action had been corrected by Li Xieni and Lu Xu only realized later that those details were the real key to unlocking his sea of qi. For example, swings and picks felt more tiring under Li Xianyi's guidance, but the fatigue wore away with practice. Instead, over the course of time, Lu Xu could feel the connection with nature and his sword skills had become much smoother too. Back then, Lu Xu did not give it a single thought about the mythical mechanisms behind. Now, it seemed so impressive that the ancestors of the Hall of Swords had actually found their own way of cultivation, during the spirit cheat efficient era. During his practice, he heard a melodious voice outside the door. Excuse me, anybody here? Bundai rose to greet the guest, but Lu Xu thought that the voice sounded familiar. He walked to the front parlor and saw the girl named Sakura Yeko standing elegantly at the yard gate. Her straight and slender legs still caught his attention first. They were not skinny in a sickly way. Instead, they were beaming with power, perhaps due to her cultivation efforts. Lu Xu watched in silence as Sakura Yeko explained to Bundai politely, I am a swordswoman in training and I know that the Kiriharas produce the best swordsmen in Nishinokyo. Thus, I was hoping you would apprentice me. As though happened to see Lu Xu by chance, Sakurai gasped in surprise. Fancy meeting you here. You are the one from Baika High School. Lu Xu grinned. I live here. 
Hi, I'm Kirihara Yusuk, the inheritor of my father's sword skills. Sakurai Yeko pretended to know nothing about that. Really? No wonder you refused to watch our match earlier in the afternoon, because you yourself are a master. Then, could you teach me? If not for his sensory abilities, he might have been fooled by her perfect acting, Lu Xu thought. But he did not have a good disposition towards her. He would not mind if she was an ordinary girl that showed kindness to him. But now, with concrete evidence, Lu Xu was sure that Sakurai Yeko had intentionally concealed her cultivation powers. Therefore, it was irrefutable that she came with a purpose. Meanwhile, Bundai was shocked too, about Lu Xu's good command of Japanese. Lu Xu smiled. Dojo is a place for teaching. We welcome any students, but there's a fee. That did not seem to bother Sakurai. She replied respectfully, I am willing to devote my everything for the true sword play. She stressed on the word, everything, which made Bundai frown with unease. She shot a glance at the girl and at Lu Xu again. That won't be necessary. Well, 20,000 per lesson. 20,000 yen is equivalent to around 1,200 yuan, which is 180 US dollars. Honestly, it was not cheap. Sakurai froze. Immediately a smile returned to her face. No problem. Please teach me. Then do you have money now? Actually we can start the lesson immediately. So soon. Sakurai was startled. Are you really keen on learning? Lu Xu replied, displeased. Of course. Certainly, yes. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 199. It was then that Lu Xu understood the dojo was the so-called inheritance left to him by the heavenly network. Without a doubt, he would not impart his true skills. As strictly speaking he was not a descendant of the Hall of Swords and he was in no position to leak their cultivation techniques. However, he would still earn quite a fortune from those coveting the Kirihara's sword play, even if they only fell for his trick once. Two hours later, Lu Xu sipped on a cup of tea as he watched Sakurai swinging her sword over and over again. Truth be told, she was rather admirable, since she abided by his order to start from the basics without any complaint. Despite the fact that her incessant distress points still gave her away. Okay. That's all for today, Lu Xu decided to ask her to leave. He had earned his living expenses for the upcoming days, so it would not matter whether Sakurai was still coming next time. Tired, Sakurai Yeko sat on the wooden floor, her skirt barely covering what was underneath. Moreover, drenched in sweat, she looked pretty attractive at the moment. She smiled and asked casually, Sensei, tomorrow's Saturday. Where are you going? Lu Xu's face went straight. Sakurai, we should stick to our murky transactions of money. There's no need for overfamiliarity. From Sakurai Yeko's Distress, plus 666. Chapter 477, The Chess and the Game. Sakurai Yeko did not know that Lu Xu was of the sensory type as this ability was such a rarity. There were only fewer than five in the entire heavenly network. Thus, she was utterly bewildered. How could a teenage boy like him be totally uninterested in girls? Sensei had taught her that no male creatures in the world could refuse an attractive female. Could he be wrong? No, Sensei could never be wrong. Kirihara Yusuk must be putting on a good pretense. Kirihara-kun, it's time for me to leave now. I will come back for another lesson tomorrow, Sakurai said with due respect. Sure. Remember to bring your fees tomorrow, Lu Xu smiled cheerfully. 1,200 yuan per day per student and he only had to teach two hours. So what if he could recruit more than 10 students? Kirihara Yusuk appeared to be in some beautiful fantasy before Sakurai even stepped out of his house. Now, she was even more confused. At night, dressed in kimono, Sakurai Yeko knelt in front of the chessboard to play chess with her teacher. Her black chess pieces suddenly broke free from the encirclement of white pieces from the bottom right corner of the board like a sharp blade. 
but were soon overshadowed by their opponents as the white pieces collaborated with one another across the entire board. The elder smiled gently. Brute force may not secure you the victory all the time, so use an open strategy. Then what is your view, sensei? Sakurai asked calmly. The young man's response to you today seems simple, but he has deep intentions. Neither close nor distant. His comment on sticking to the murky transactions of money appears to be a joke, but also clearly conveys his stand, the elder commended, surprisingly, the Kiriharas have produced a talent of independence, abilities, and own opinions. That did not help Sakurai to clarify her bewilderment. Is he really so scheming? The elder's face went serious. Do not ever underestimate anybody, Yeiko. Yes, sensei, abashed, Sakurai lowered her head, never again. I'm afraid he is very cautious at the moment. With the recent passing of his parents and the direct encounter with the conflicts between two parties, I would also keep my distance from everybody if I were him. As the sole inheritor of the Kirihara's trade, he refuses to join the battle. In order not to risk disgracing themselves, no one would force him to do anything. But, we need him, for the high reputation of the Kurahara family, the elder exclaimed. Then, he smiled. It is totally unexpected that this young man can actually remain calm in Sakurai's charm. Boys like him are hard to come by. So? Are you willing to continue getting in touch with him? Sakurai went serious. I am willing to do anything for my master, including yielding myself to him. No rush, the elder smiled, not for now. Then what should we do? Sakurai felt lost. Her years of cultivation under her master's guidance had also come along with diplomacy, tricks and techniques, which won her the great popularity among high school students. But as a 17-year-old girl, her experience was too limited. The elder pondered for a long while before replying, let me pay him a visit. Sakurai wanted to object at once. Sensei, it will be inappropriate for you to make a public appearance now. The elder stood up slowly, exuding great confidence from his gestures. No one in Nishinokyo can stop me if I want to go. When Lu Shu practiced his sword play taught by Li Xieni, Tanaguchi Bundai sat at the side of the yard, smiling, as she sipped on tea. She saw the future of their motherland in Lu Xu's vibrancy. Many geniuses like him had emerged in China in the recent years. Pride welled up from the bottom of her heart, though she lived across the vast sea. However, she found it hard to understand why the network was willing to send such a brilliant young man to be a spy. As Lu Xu thrust his sword forward, a line of bamboo leaves was slit open neatly in the not-so-far distance, as though being struck by a sharp blade. Even Lu Xu himself was stunned. The thrust had triggered in him a faint connection with his sea of chi and snow mountain. Could he have stimulated his sword energy unintentionally? But when he gave it another try, the feeling was gone. Strange. Yet, the power of his sword energy motivated Lu Xu even further to scrape down his snow mountain as soon as possible. Certainly, he would be much more powerful once his sea of chi was unlocked. A warm smile appeared on Bundai's face. You must be tired. Come and have some tea. Lu Xu gulped the small cup of tea in one swallow, putting in no effort to savor its taste. But Bundai did not seem upset. Don't you mind me drinking tea like this, he asked curiously. Isn't tea supposed to be drunk, she smiled in reply. How true, Lu Xu said after a pause to process her meanings. At this moment, there came another visitor. An old but composed voice sounded at the door, Excuse me, anyone home? Who's visiting so late? Were there so many visitors here last time? Lu Xu whispered. The Kiriharas were the leaders of the conservatives. Thus, understandably, they had quite a number of visitors. But few had come since their passing. I'm guessing they are here for you. Bundai replied softly. She wondered what Lu Xu had actually done to attract so many people to their doorstep. You may stay here. I will go and take a look. 
Then Lu Xu left for the door. Immediately he froze at the sight of the visitor's face. Wasn't that Oda Takuma, the new leader of the conservatives as stated in the information file? The Class B expert who had yet to be killed by the jingoists even until today. Yet, Lu Xu did not panic, thanks to his rich experience and self-assurance gained from the many fights. He made a quick analysis of the situation, which concluded in great confidence of escaping unharmed should the man come in malice. Besides, he would not dare to chase Lu Xu around the streets in Nishinokyo. Glad to see you, Uncle Oda. Lu Xu greeted him. Oda Takuma had been an acquaintance of the Kiriharas and Bundai had reminded him that Kirihara Yusuk used to address Oda Takuma as his uncle. Thus, if Lu Xu acted as if he did not know him, he had to cover for his lie by saying that he had had an amnesia. Smiling, Oda Takuma showed his chessboard and chess pieces. Your father always mentioned that you are good at chess, but we never had a chance to play. So? Want to have a round with your uncle? 20,000 per game. From Oda Takuma's distress, plus 666. Chapter 478, 5 stones in one line. 20,000 yen per game. That would only be logical if someone wanted to invite Oda Takuma, a renowned chess player, for a round of chess. Unexpectedly, though, this kid had actually quoted a price. What kind of inheritor had the Kiriharas produced? But Oda was good at maintaining emotional stability. He said, sure. I can give you as much as you want. He was actually implying that the conservatives were very rich, in spite of their humble powers. Lu Xu's eyes lit up in excitement. Let's have ten rounds then. You may pay one round's fee as a deposit and three round's fee in advance. Oda Takuma took a long moment to react. Did he think he was renting houses? Then, without a word, he walked into the hall and knelt down in front of a wooden table, upon which he placed his chess board. Lu Xu did not hesitate any further. Seated, he suddenly asked, where have you been, Uncle Oda? Oda Takuma shot him a cautious glance. Was he trying to coax the information of my secret base out of me? Thus, he asked another question in reply, Kirihara, how are you feeling after your parents' passing? Sad. You have changed and, honestly speaking, you are cuter than before. You didn't even dare to look into my eyes last time. Right, I've changed, Lu Xu pretended to be in deep thought, my parents' death has left a great impact on me. Can I ask what future plans you have? Or any wishes? Oda asked slowly and casually. Kirihara Yusuk would certainly need help from the conservatives if he was thinking of revenge. Wishes? I aim for world peace. Be serious. From Oda Takuma's distress, plus 66. He now realized that this kid was as cunning as he had expected. He was not even willing to answer his questions. How cautious. Are we still playing chess? Lu Xu asked. You first. Take the black piece, Oda decided to finish the game first. He had always told Sakurai Yeko that one's personality could be easily seen from a game of chess, and his or her life from the playing style. A decisive girl, Sakurai tended to exploit bold moves during chess, like a sword, quick and sharp. But as a result of her young age, she lacked a certain degree of flexibility sometimes. Despite this, Oda decided to be more tolerant towards her and gave her time to learn. This time, his decision to play chess with Kirihara Yusuk stemmed from the same reason as well. He wanted to have a peek into Kirihara's inner world through chess, since an open conversation would probably be impossible. Oda took the game seriously. The young man would be an indispensable addition to the conservatives. Hence, he could not take any chances. Lu Xu picked up a black stone and placed it gently on the upper left corner of the board. In fact, it was a commonly adopted strategy in Go, and many deemed it as a tactical move. Despite the many disagreements, it must be acknowledged that corner occupation played a key role in Go games. 
Oda picked up a white stone and landed it in the bottom right corner. It was known as the large knight's move, so as to defend his corner. Its weakness lay in restricted movements, but with good coordination Oda could surround his opponent from other routes as well. The message hidden therein was that, I'm interested in responding to you, but will you do the same? Lu Xu was surprised by his move. Then, he paused and took his time to think. That gave Oda a glint of hope. Apparently, the young man had read his mind. Now that he was thinking, he was clearly willing to give a thought to their potential collaboration. So long as the possibility was not ruled out completely, Oda had the confidence to roll the boy into their organization. After all, given his young age and limited experience, how could he be Oda's rival, under Oda's numerous diplomatic tricks? However, in the next instant, Lu Xu placed another black stone beside his first, closely together. A bad hunch rose up in Oda's heart. Third, fourth, and fifth. Lu Xu's black stones quickly formed into a straight line with no obstacles at all. Five stones in one line. Lu Xu let out a sigh of relief, yet looking serious. Please pardon me. From Oda Takuma's distress, plus 666. So, you hesitated just now because you were wondering why I did not block your stone? Oda realized suddenly. How did you know? Lu Xu's face was beaming with admiration. From Oda Takuma's distress, plus 66. Oda calmed himself down. He should remain composed and unmoved in front of a young man. But what's wrong with you? Looking dead serious after putting down five bloody stones? Goodbye. Oda Takuma packed up his chessboard and stones and was about to leave. He had lost all hope in sounding out anything more from Lu Xu. Then, he heard Lu Xu's shout from behind. You haven't paid. Oda took out 20,000 yen and left it on the table. Lu Xu requested, why not play two more rounds? It's been a long time since the last time I had such an enjoyable game. In the past, chess games with Lu Xiaoyu were literally a crossfire and it was extremely hard to win. But now, he could win effortlessly and, even better, there was money. Certainly he knew that the elder had come for a Go game. But, as a poor Go player, he would rather act dumb in refusal of the visitor's covert probing than arousing suspicions with his pathetic skills. With 20,000 yen in his hands, Lu Xu returned to the inner room. Bundai asked, did Oda Takuma really come for you? Yes. He came for a game of chess, Lu Xu nodded. Was it Go? He did come here frequently last time to play Go. But how did you finish one round so fast? In her impression, one round would usually take a long time. Lu Xu replied, his skills can't be compared to mine. Thus, I won easily. I wanted to have another round with him, but he refused to. Here, 20,000 yen that he lost to me. It should be enough for our recent expenses. Nya Ting is so unreliable. Bundai was dumbstruck. So there was a bet now and he had won it? Besides, Oda Takuma was a famous chess player in Nishinokyo and few could defeat him. How could Lu Xu actually win the game so fast? Was Lu Xu really so damn powerful? Then Lu Xu asked a question she was not expecting at all. Are you sure there's no inheritance? Bundai smiled, covering her mouth. You are so greedy for money. Who doesn't like money? When Oda returned to his secret base, Sakurai was still practicing in the yard. Surprised by his fast return, she asked, How are you back so soon, Sensei? Did you win? Oda froze mid-step for a second. Then, he replied, No. I lost. You may continue getting in touch with him like what we have agreed earlier. Try to get him to our side before he knows your identity. Okay. Sakurai made a respectful bow, but her heart was overwhelmed with shock. How could her master have possibly lost to that young man? As expected, he was not as simple as she had thought. Yet, Sakurai had full confidence about her appearance and physical attractiveness. 
Chapter 479, The Opening of Dojo Training Sessions Early in the morning, Bun Dai heard sharp air splitting sounds outside when she was still in her bed. Thus, she dressed herself and pulled open the door to see Lu Xu practicing his sword play in the yard. Lu Xu asked apologetically, Did I wake you up? Bundai shook her head, smiling. No worries. Please carry on. I'm going to make breakfast for you. She checked the time. It was only 3 a.m. At the very beginning of Lu Xu's cultivation journey, he woke up at 3 a.m. every day to practice swordplay with Li Xianyi. Every stroke had to be performed to the fullest. Yet, with the stagnation in his progress on Sea of Qi and Snow Mountain, it had been a long time since he had trained like that. Hence, a sense of disorientation struck him amidst his rapid growth and strength, and his original purpose and cultivation seemed to be drifting further away. Li Xianyi once said that one should never forget how to handle a physical sword even when they had reached the level of utilizing everything, as their swords. Maybe one day everyone would reach the end of the road. By then, the sword that one held in their hand would be the only weapon to protect them from harm. Lu Xu had suddenly found his inner peace upon his arrival in Nishinokyo. There was no need to be concerned about his chives nor the relic and even the enmity between the conservatives and the jingoists did not appear that urgent due to the drastic difference in their strengths. At the moment, Lu Xu ground his corpse dog and concealed arrow day and night. Li Xianyi once told him that the snow mountain was meant for him to sharpen the intent of his sword, whose meaning remained unclear even till that day. But honestly speaking, Lu Xu enjoyed peaceful days like this. They were soothing. After breakfast, Lu Xu saw a slender figure at his door, Sakurai Yeko. He drew a startled breath. You are so early. Sakurai smiled. I'm free on weekends anyways, so I decided to train under you, Sensei. I believe my hard work will definitely pay off eventually. Lu Xu mused. Then you'll need to pay me more. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 199. 20,000 yen was only the lesson fee for two hours. Besides, Lu Xu had wanted to recruit more students. So wasn't it sensible that she had to pay more for longer hours of lessons? Sakurai took a long while to consider her response. Sure. No problem, sensei. She had no shortage of small change like that. Furthermore, the investment would be worthwhile so long as she could get close to Kirihara Yusuk and roll him into their plan. But disappointment set in after one day of practice, which comprised solely of basic moves like hacks and splits, nothing related to cultivation at all. It was understandable, though. It would be too easy if she could learn an inherited trade with merely a few tens of thousands of yen a day. Sakurai felt relieved. She planned on getting another step closer. Before she left at night, Sakurai suddenly asked, Sensei, can I be your live-in student? I can take care of you or anything you want me to. That was the usual way adopted before the passing on of true skills. It would be more convenient for the teacher to teach and observe a student's character when they stayed together. Yet, Lu Xu rejected at once without any room for negotiation. No. Sakurai was stunned for a long moment, racking her brains for a possible reason for this straightforward rejection. Her identity was definitely safe as of now, so was it because she was not pretty enough? Nonsense. Meanwhile, Lu Xu was calculating too. Not to mention the girl's hidden identity, her addition to the household would mean a higher budget on food. Clearly she had wanted to take advantage of him. Then, he asked, Sakurai, would you mind me telling others that you are my student? Puzzled, Sakurai guessed he might be probing her sincerity. Hence, she smiled at once. Why would I? It's my honor to be your student. Good. Lu Xu nodded. At night, Sakurai sought help from her teacher after she returned to the base. I think he is too wary. He's neither willing to teach me real things nor let me get close. Normal, Oda replied calmly, do you not remember your greatest advantage? Go. No more hesitation. 
When this moment had finally come, Sakurai Yeko felt sorry for herself. In any case, she was like a goddess in so many boys' hearts and her face and body were almost flawless. However, in the end, such a perfect body had to be sacrificed. Despite her great efforts in cultivation, it turned out that in her teacher's eyes, her looks and body were a greater strength of hers than her capabilities. Oda cast her a glimpse. Do you feel undeserving? Sakurai knelt down on the tatami, her forehead touching her knees. No. Not at all. Then go. Actually, the Kirihara Yusuk now is not a bad boy. Maybe he will be a good lifelong partner for you. Understood. Now thinking about it, Sakurai suddenly felt that in spite of Kurihara's mediocre appearance and occasional annoyance, she felt comfortable by his side. Generally speaking, it felt natural. Almost the antonym of pretentiousness, he would dig his nose when he felt like it, totally disregarding her presence. The next morning, Sakurai was so shocked that she felt like being struck by lightning as she arrived at the door of Baika Dojo. There was a gigantic hand-drawn poster pasted outside the dojo and went, Sakurai Yeko's sword play. Do you want to be as superb as Sakurai Yeko in swords? Attend the lesson now at only 20,000 yen per session. Open on Saturdays and Sundays. Lu Xu walked out when she was struggling to gather her thoughts. So, this is why you asked me yesterday whether I minded you telling others that I'm your student. Sakurai could not help but ask. Feeling a bit guilty, Lu Xu replied, rest assured that I won't pocket all the money. I'll give you 2,000 yen per student. Even though he had gained her approval, he felt a little guilty for using her reputation in Nishinokyo High Schools for free. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 999. What the heck? So now she had a new identity, the publicity person for a dojo? At this moment, a young student walked out from the dojo. She was overjoyed upon meeting Sakurai. Sakurai Senpai. You are really learning swordplay here. Sakurai replied absently, yeah. Then the student took out her phone from her pocket and shouted excitedly, I really met Sakurai Senpai. Come. Quick. Yes, it's true. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 999. Now she realized that perhaps her teacher was right. She was no rival to Kirihara Yusuk in terms of cunningness. Chapter 480, Tanaguchi Bundai's Backup Plan Standing at the yard gate, Lu Xu put on a sophisticated look and eyed the crowd of students gathering in front of his dojo. In fact, he did have a great master's mean when he wanted to. What was a great master's mean? Absolute confidence, of course. When someone wanted to pick a fight with the dojo, a great master would dismiss him with ease because he knew he was unbeatable. Now, the same went for Lu Xu. Anything could be the essence of swordplay if he insisted so, because no high school students could defeat him. In only an hour, there were already dozens of students sitting in the hall with their legs crossed. They were ecstatic to have lessons with Sakurai Yeko. Although honestly Lu Xu did not want to draw a percentage from his earnings to be given to Sakurai, it was a long-term strategy. Sakurai Yeko walked to Lu Xu and made a bow. I suppose there are no more students for today. Shall we begin our lessons now? Right, thought Lu Xu, it was unrealistic to expect every Nishinokyo high school student to come due to the fees. But he was surprised to see a handful of girls in the group. Seriously? Japanese girls are into that. All right. Sakurai, you'll be the teacher for today. You can practice what you have learned through guiding others as well, Lu Xu said, acting as if it was totally sensible. Then he returned to the backyard for a rest. Those students did not mind at all. After all, they had come for Sakurai Yeko. They would be more than happy if she could teach them herself. But Sakurai was on the brink of frustration. So it turned out that you simply wanted to keep me busy. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 666. 
At the moment, the front hall was filled with laughter. Lu Shu liked this kind of teaching mode, because everyone was happy about it, except Sakurai Yeko. Bundai smiled, covering her mouth. You are so interesting. I can see that young lady likes you, yet you are making things difficult for her. Actually, the Kiriharas had never hosted so many students concurrently before. It reminds me of those old days. So boisterous. She has approached me with hidden agendas. She is a class C, yet pretends to be an ordinary student. Besides, she came right after Kirihara Yusuk's parents' passing. It can't be so coincidental, Lu Xu said. He did not think it was necessary to keep it a secret from Bundai, since they were on the same team. Bundai did not seem surprised. Things like this are actually quite normal, though I haven't noticed anything unusual about her. Be careful, though. A question suddenly struck Lu Xu, and he thought aloud, If I'm exposed, you will surely be in trouble. Has the Heavenly Network prepared any backup plan for you? Bundai made a deep bow. Thank you for your concern. My current identity is not the only one I have. I will retreat safely before danger arrives. You don't have to worry too much about me. Thus, if Lu Xu's mission failed, Bundai would start a new life with another identity. In fact, she felt happy and touched by Lu Xu's concern. No one would be willing to team up with a cold-blooded reptile anyway. In the meantime, Chiba stopped in front of the lively dojo. Down about her studies, she decided to go for a walk, though she could not explain why she had ended up outside Kirihara's house. Mixed feelings welled up in her heart at the sight of the dojo. No wonder Kiriharakin had rejected her invitation to a movie, it was because he was busy with reviving his family's martial arts business. Immediately, her depression from the rejection was swept away. You are the best, Kiriharakin. She thought. In the next instant, however, the poster caught her attention. Sakurai Yeko's swordplay. She took a long moment to straighten out her thoughts. Had Sakurai Yeko been practicing swordplay with Kiriharakin all along? The phrasing of the poster was indeed misleading. It seemed to suggest that all of Sakurai's sword skills were learned from the Kiriharas. Chiba felt a sharp prick in her heart. Distress crossed her face as she realized that Kiriharakin's refusal to watch Sakurai's sword match was not because of a lack of interest. Furthermore, Sakurai's confession was not a pure coincidence either. Could it be that she had developed admiration for Kira Harakin during their long-term practice? It was highly likely. Chiba was pretty too, but her body could not be compared to Sakurai Yeko's at all. As a matter of fact, many Japanese girls were not blessed with an attractive body shape from birth. But Sakurai was an exception. Thinking of that, Chiba's heart was plunged into gloom again. She turned and continued to walk forward. Then, she heard something landing on the ground in the lane next to the Kirihara's yard. Out of curiosity, she looked in that direction, only to see Lu Xu walking out after just having climbed over the wall. Kirihara-kin? Chiba gasped in shock and shot another look at the dojo. I thought you were teaching inside. Lu Xu was stunned too, not expecting to see Chiba there. Err, why are you here? Nervous, Chiba immediately pulled an excuse. I'm going to buy groceries and happened to walk past here. Oh. Lu Xu gave a nod and decided to leave, with no intention to justify his suspicious actions. Before he walked far, he turned and whispered. Don't tell anyone that I climbed out. It's a secret. Chiba nodded, but did not extend any invitation to Lu Xu again. She needed time to muster her courage after the rejection. Yet, she felt uplifted, as Kiriharakin did not spend most of his time with Sakurai Yeko, and now the two of them even shared a secret. What does it mean to be happy?
Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look down 